Praise the Lord, everyone. Once again, here we are. It is another Sunday and your Sunday service that we're bringing from our chapel, my wife Stephanie and I, and we hope that uh, you will enter in with us as we sing some choruses, a uh, hymn, and then look to the Word of God. Let's open in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we do thank you once again. Here we are by your blessing, your mercy, and your grace, able, dear Lord Jesus, to come and worship with you. We ask, dear Father, that you would just strengthen all of your people and help us, dear Lord Jesus, to keep looking up and to keep the joy of the Lord as our strength. We pray, Lord, that you would just bless these words and the message. May it be anointed by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's begin with a chorus. I want more of Jesus. I want more of Jesus. I want more of God. Change in the twinkling of an eye. 
My home is in heaven, just waiting for me. My home is in
Yes, that's a very a great message and a very, very important thing for us as God's people that we continue to pray one for another. And uh, certainly uh, we thank you for joining us on Wednesday evening in your home as we pray uh, together corporately uh, for the needs and around the world. And certainly if you have specific needs, please let us know. Also a reminder that if you have tithing, uh, missionary or building fund or offerings uh, that they can be dropped off at the church. Um, you can let me know if you'd like. Um, you can certainly drop things off at our home and uh, we can do that in a safe way uh, just to maintain uh, our uh, commitment to our missionaries and to just uh, be able to keep up uh, with costs and things of that nature. Uh, so as the Lord leads you, uh, please uh, hear his call and do as he asks. This evening, I'm going to start actually by doing something a little bit different. Um, and it's very short. <laughs> I'm really not very sure, sure very much how, how good this is going to be. Um, but I'm going to disappear off of screen just for a moment. And um, you're going to hear something. It's a little bit of a test. And I'm going to, when I come back, ask you what you heard. So can you identify this sound? But uh, I did find this lovely bugle, I suppose, um, what we today would call a bugle, um, downstairs, we cleaned it up a little bit, and I'll do that again uh, before I put it back. And, um, well, it's a little bit better. It's more of a sort of a sad elephant kind of a sound, perhaps. But uh, So if you had trouble guessing, if you said elephant, uh, I would give you points for that as well, <laughs> or any animal in distress. But the correct answer was trumpet, is what I'm after. And uh, we are going to be looking at and examining trumpets in the Bible. Uh, and, but more so with regards to their purpose and the... Uh, sound, the distinct sound, that comes from a well-played trumpet or a well-played bugle uh, that most of us would recognize and look at how important it is for that sound to be recognized and also for God's people to be recognized. My title for this message is Let Your Song be heard. Let your song be heard. And actually inspired by a resident in our backyard of late. I believe we now have male and female that we have spotted. Uh, we have an Oriole uh, in our backyard that comes to visit and frequent. Uh, we're feeding and uh, if the squirrels don't get the slices of orange, then we believe that they are getting some of that as well. But the nectar that is there. But the other morning I was out um, earlier with uh, our dog and just uh, sort of enjoying the backyard and the sound of the stream and I heard a sound that I immediately was able to identify as an Oriole. Now, the reason that I can identify that now is I've managed to see him or her actually singing and uh, making themselves known so I know now that that sound is coming from an Oriole. But now, I can identify that sound and know, simply by the sound, that that Oriole is close somewhere, is nearby, and he 
is singing for all he is worth. She is singing for all she is worth. They are letting the entire world know that they are there. And that made me reflect on God's people. It made me think about, are we, are you, am I, is God's church truly sounding the alarm or singing God's song so that the world around us knows that we are here? They should be able to identify us by our song. And when I say that, I'm really, I suppose, considering our entire lifestyle. Our entire life should be as the trumpet sound, uh, letting the world know that the Lord's people are still here, letting people in Canada know there are still Christians that are here, there are still praying people that believe that my God can do anything, that God is able to heal, that God is able to deliver all the things that we find in Scripture that we still believe and stand for what the Lord has taught His children. We have not disappeared. You see, the day that I go outside and I can't hear, because right now, pretty well every day, I couldn't really tell you the last time I've been outside and not heard the Oriole. When I stop hearing him, it will tell me that something has happened to him or that he has gone away. But while I hear him singing, even if I don't see him in person, I know he is nearby and he is telling me so. So I was thinking about that in our Christian song, and that made me think about the trumpet. Because in Scripture, we often refer to the trumpet sound. And so we are going to take a look at the use of the trumpet, and how today we are still to be like trumpets. And Scripture actually speaks to that. So, let us start in the Old Testament, because this is where, in Numbers, Numbers chapter 10, we see a reference to trumpets. Now, I am going to make a distinction here, uh, a little bit, uh, because these were not uh, the um, shofar, the ram's horn, uh, that we know is associated with many Jewish uh, celebrations, and we see that also in Scripture. This is not the shofar that is being blown. These are what Scripture refers to as trumpets. So I was a little bit curious, and I did some research, and my question into the computer was, what did a trumpet look like in biblical times? And basically, um, it looks like a long bugle. Okay, it's sort of like if I take this, if we take this and we stretch it out so that we don't have all of these curls in here, and basically we would have one long uh, cylindrical tube opening up um, that would be blown, um, as Scripture refers to it here. And these trumpets that we're going to read about here in Numbers, they were made out of silver, and they were to be blown by the priests, um, and had special purpose as well. And we want to take a look at the purposes uh, that we see here. So Numbers chapter 10, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Numbers 10 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Of a whole piece shalt thou make them, that thou mayest use them, and here the Lord explains, for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. When ye blow an alarm, 
Then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. When ye blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall make their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over the burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may go may be to you for a, a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. So here we see that God instructs uh, Moses and the people that they are to build, construct, uh, these silver trumpets uh, tells us specifically out of one piece and that uh, they are to be blown but they are to be blown for specific purposes and one of the things we see is that they summon and it says they're for the calling of the assembly and so it calls people together the trumpet also was used to tell people it's time to move so this was a communications tool it was blown as an alarm, and there are specifics that are given here, and it is also to be blown, if you look in verse 10, uh, it is also to be blown for gladness, for celebration, and for holy days, solemn days, and of course, in verse 9, it speaks about when they were going to war. So, the same trumpets were blown for different purposes at different times. Times, but in all cases, they were being blown as per instruction of our God, as the Lord instructed them. So I would imagine that they were not used just for casual music or anything of that nature. They were blown specifically for what God had ordained them to be blown for when that was supposed to happen. And it had purpose. Because, you see, the trumpet's blowing was very unique. It was distinct. It was something that could be heard above all of the other chatter and noise, which you can, you know, try to imagine. We're not talking about a small gathering. The children of Israel were not a small group of people. There were thousands of people, families divided into their different tribes, and somehow... They had to be organized. They had to have some way of knowing what to do. So without the technology that we have today, um, they used the trumpet. And today, you see, the distinct sound of the trumpet coming from you and coming from me as God's people can still serve the same purposes. The scripture tells us in Matthew, turn with me to Matthew chapter 5, journeying now into the New Testament. Let me take some familiar verses and just blend them in here with this whole idea. And I want you to keep thinking about how, as God's people, we are not to be silent. Silence is not a good thing in this particular case. Silence of the oriole means that either that bird is gone or is dead. Something has happened. It's sick. Something is not right. The birds sing when they are happy. They sing also for purpose, to call one another. And so you see, as God's people, when we fall silent, I would say to you that there's something not right. We're not in the place where the Lord wants us to be. Because we should be blowing the trumpet. We should be letting people know that God is still on the throne 
and letting them know where they can come to meet the Lord as their Savior. So, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, familiar verse, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So we are not to be hidden. Right now, actually, if I am in my backyard, or if you take a look, it's just right now the leaves are popping on the trees, right? Very, very soon all of the trees, if not already, in your neighborhood are going to be full of leaves. Right now, I can still spot the Oriole, because of its lovely color, in the trees, if I sort of follow that sound, I can zero in on where he might happen to be. I can find him because of his sound, and right now I can see him. But as the trees fill in, and you know all the leaves grow, likely I am not going to see him before I hear him. And as God's people, let us recognize the power of our voice, the power of the trumpet, the power of the Spirit of the Lord moving through us, using us as instruments. Consider yourself a trumpet that the Lord picks up and blows and uses to do what? To call the people together or to tell us it's time to move forward or to warn us that the enemy is coming. See, God has chosen to move through these earthen vessels that we have dedicated to him, just as we might choose to pick up the trumpet and blow it at the appropriate time. The Lord knows. And we have such an important task with regards to letting the Lord's light shine through each and every one of us. Now, I'm not a trumpet player. You're surprised? <laughs> you shouldn't be surprised. I'm sure you're not surprised. I am not a trumpet player. And so, for me to blow the trumpet appropriately, at the right time, in the right way, to make sure you get the right message, that would take some practice. That would take some learning. That would take someone to teach me. Let's go back for a moment to the Oriole. The Oriole, I don't speak Oriole. And so, to me, it's just a lovely sound, and it's some, you know, the Oriole is singing or chirping, uh, however you would like to describe it. But that Oriole is communicating to others of its same species. And when the trumpet blows, it is sending a message that is important for others to understand that message. And as God's people, we will ask the Lord to use us, to move through us, to send a message to the world around us that they would understand. You know, there's no point in blowing the trumpet and it's supposed to be the symbol or signal for advancement to move forward, well, there's no point in blowing the trumpet that's tell, supposed to tell people to move forward if they can't distinguish what that signal is, if they can't tell what's supposed to happen. So, as God's people, we want to make sure that we are not causing confusion. Now, how does confusion come about? I believe confusion comes about when I do things my way and you do things your way and somebody else down the street does things their way and everybody is claiming to be blowing the trumpet of the Lord, to be sharing the gospel, to be furthering God's kingdom, but we're all going to do it in our own way. That creates confusion. That would be like good trumpet players 
one deciding this is what I'm going to do as an alarm, and then another one decides this is the way I'm going to send the alarm. And if it's all different, nobody knows what's going on. See, when people get into the mix and we start to do things because we think that's the right way to do it, we end up with confusing trumpet messages. We need to take our instruction from the gospel. We need to have our instruction from the Lord. He's the master. If we continue with our sort of picture of the trumpet, he is the teacher who teaches us this is the way you blow the trumpet when we want to send this message. And then we don't do it our own way. We learn to do it God's way. So, Scripture also tells us in 2 Timothy, and this is one of the verses that I like among many, but I think is very important, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, it would be foolishness for me to say to you, I am an established trumpet player. Well, I should be ashamed of how I play the trumpet because I don't play it. I just kind of blow it in and there's some noise that comes out. But you see, Scripture tells us that we are to study the Word of God. This is like our blueprint. This is our instruction book. When it comes to sharing the gospel, when it comes to letting our light shine, when it comes to uh, blowing the trumpet so that people around us come to know the Lord and hear what God wants them to hear, we need to take our instruction from Scripture. We need to take, take our instruction by the Holy Spirit from the Lord so that your trumpet blowing for gladness is the same as my trumpet blowing for gladness. And it shouldn't matter whether I am going to uh, God's church here in Cambridge or I am a Christian serving in Nova Scotia or I am a Christian serving in Mexico or wherever I am, the sound of the trumpet should be the same because we are all learning from the same master. We are all gaining our instruction on how to blow and what to, to send that signal all from the same place. That's critical. Right now we see birds everywhere building nests. And some have already had their first um, eggs hatch. And the birds have taken flight already. Well, if you're a bird and you're chirping away and you're trying to find a partner and and some other birds are doing the same, but everybody's doing it in a different language, so to speak. Well, we're never going to find that partner. We're not going to survive. And as God's people, it's critical that we all have the same trumpet sounding. Or, another way of looking at it, that we, have, we all serve the same Savior. And that when he picks us up, he will blow or use us in the same way for the same problems. Now, there are different problems, and there are different circumstances, but God addresses all of those things in Scripture. I am not saying that we um, you know, make up our own rules. No. We make sure that we're following God's instruction, that we're following the notes the words that God has given us to follow. One more verse that I'd like to give you in closing, we find here in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 
Chapter 14 is an interesting chapter, and it actually speaks with regards to prophecy. And uh, the verses here uh, speak to the Holy Spirit speaking through God's people in tongues. Yeah. Uh, that's not my topic for this particular message, but there is a verse here that does apply, and it is verse 8. So we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 8, where it tells us, For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Read that one again. That's really, really important. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Now, just in closing, let's substitute, without changing scripture, let's substitute here some other words or terms for trumpet. What if we were to say, for if the Christian give an uncertain sound, or how about if the church give an uncertain sound? You see what I'm getting at? You see, we have to, as Scripture says, let the light shine. We need to let the Lord use us so that that trumpet sound, we need to testify, we need to live a life that is according to the gospel. We need to be identifiable to the world around us so that perhaps they've never set foot in a church, yet they know, hey, that's a Christian that lives in that house. How will they know? They'll know by the sound that we make, the song that we sing, the life that we are living. But if that is uncertain, you know, when I blew the trumpet, bugle, that was pretty uncertain, wasn't it? Right? You know, if, if I said to you, I'm going to pick that instrument up right now, and I'm going to play, I'm going to blow a C, the C note. Good luck with that. Right? Why? Because I'm not certain. I have no clue how to get to that note on that particular instrument. I can find it on a piano. I can do it on a clarinet. But I cannot do it on a trumpet. I am not certain about how to play that trumpet. And as God's people, you see, we need not, we must not fall into that same negative pattern where we are not sure. As Christ's ambassadors, we all need to be very sure of what we believe, what the Lord has said, who is your Savior and mine? Who do we serve? Where are we going? And what is it that we wish to share with the community in which we live, with the people around us, with our own family members, with regards to our life serving our risen Savior? Let us not be that trumpet that has an uncertain sound. Because as the scripture says, who shall prepare himself to the battle? People won't come. They won't recognize the truth. Because we're not sure about the truth. And then we come again, in a sense, full circle with regards to the need for us to study to look to Scripture, to spend time in prayer, to spend time with our Master, with the Master, who is going to teach us everything we need to know about being His trumpet. I'm going to leave you with that thought. I'm going to ask you to pray about how you are as a trumpet. What kind of trumpet are you? And is the Lord using you to send that message to the community around us? Heavenly Father, we do ask, as we close this sermon, as we close this message, Lord, that you would pick us up. Perhaps we're a little tarnished. 
Perhaps we have some dents and some bruises, so to speak, of our journey. But Lord, regardless of that, I know that you can make us a new creature. You can take a used, beat-up trumpet and you can make it shiny and new again. But that trumpet, Lord, just as our lives, I pray, help us to be dedicated to you. As we read, Lord God, you instructed the building, the creation of two silver trumpets and that they were to be used for a specific purpose. And Father, let us be sanctified. Let us be set apart. Let us, Lord Jesus, be holy unto thee. That, Father, we could be used by you to send that message, to send that word, to give that warning when you, dear Lord Jesus, lead and guide and direct us to do so. May we have a song that we sing that others around us would know that we are your children. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for your care and your love and for dear Lord Jesus just keeping us for another day. May we, dear Lord Jesus, continue to worship and serve you. Though we do it distant from one another, I'm thankful, Lord, that we can feel your spirit move, that we, dear Lord Jesus, can feel your anointing, and let, Lord, you continue to bind us together with your love and with, dear Lord, the blood that was shed at Calvary. We ask, dear Father, strengthen us and bring us, dear Lord Jesus, closer to you in thy mighty name.